Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this Jmeter tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn about a listener called view results in table. So let's begin. In our previous session, we learned about aggregate report, right? In this session, we will learn about the view results in table form. Okay. For that, we will be opening our test, which we created earlier. Okay. And we will be adding that particular listener. Okay. So here, on the thread group level just click on this one click on add then go to the listener and here you will find view results in table yeah this one okay just click on this one okay so this is the first look for you in terms of this particular listener it has multiple fields here okay sample start time thread name label sample time status bytes send bytes latency and connect time and we also have these name comments and we also can write and read from the file as well okay then we have this options here scroll automatically child samples number of samples latest sample average and deviation so we will learn about each and everything here okay for that i will be executing our test and see if we are getting some data here or not so just dry run this one before that i will be you know changing to the one threads okay so that you can understand okay run this one and let's see yeah so we, we are getting some data here right okay now let's increase the number of threads so that we can have some data here in this report and then we will analyze each and every column here okay just go to thread group and change the number of threads to five here and wrap up time is one second that's okay and the attrition count would be one okay now clear the results first here and execute this test again okay you will see that we are getting some results and execution got completed successfully now what is the sample number actually we have defined the number of threads or users as five so in the report it says that this is sample number one means thread number one, thread number two, thread number three, thread number four, thread number five. So either you can call it as a thread or a user. Okay. Here you can also have the start time of each thread or user. Okay. You can see the start time. So when this user start the execution of this particular request. Okay. Then we have this thread name. Thread name is basically a thread group name here. Okay, and then in front of thread group name, we have this numbers 1-1, 1-2, 1-3, 1-4, 1-5. Now what this means? So the first one means that first iteration, first iteration, first user, first iteration, second user, first iteration, third user, and so on. Okay, then we have this label. So label is basically is your sample name or the request name okay then we have sample time in milliseconds okay so how much this sample okay took time in terms of the millisecond okay so we have time for each and every sample okay with respect to number of threads so thread one means user one two three four and five okay all users have now different times okay in terms of completing this sample request then we have this status column here okay so if you haven't used any kind of assertion so by default if your request is okay means you are getting some proper response then it would be a green here okay in case if request is not getting properly loaded or there is some problem with the request you will get a red mark here okay but in case of the assertion if assertion is passed you will get a green tick and if the assertion is failed you will get a red mark here okay then these are the bytes okay then we have sent these number of bytes and received these ones okay and now we have two important concepts here number one is called latency and other one is connect time now let's understand the concept of latency because latency and connect time 
are really really important in order to understand the performance of your application okay for that i'm opening a document here and let's try to understand this one so usually what happens is that you would be sending a request from your browser to your application okay and you're getting some response okay from the server so your application is basically hosted on some server so you are sending some request from your browser maybe your mobile application which is your client and then that request will be processed here on the server level and after that server will give you a response okay so this is a whole process of your request from the request till response you received okay now what is latency here okay so latency is basically a time taken from this client request and the response time okay response in terms of the request traveled from server to the client it doesn't include the server processing time so what it means is that if i create some block here to explain you exactly the what is the timing here so the time of latency is calculated here as from this point okay till this point okay so this is the portion okay and let me change no fill okay so this is time for from the client to server this time and from server to client this is called a latency or latency time now how it would be calculated for example here your request from client to server took like one second okay and when server computer to the result and send a request response back to the client okay it took like two seconds so your latency will be basically okay just let me write here so latency equals to three seconds okay so it's basically request time and response time okay and in some cases what happens is that obviously there would be a processing time in the server side okay in an ideal case the server took maybe like here okay like three seconds to process this request okay so if we have to compute the whole time of the response okay then in this particular case the complete response response time okay complete time of request or response complete time okay is equals to is equals to one plus two plus three okay so which is equals to total six seconds so latency is a time travel over the network so this is the area where your request was traveling over the network and then in the similar way the response was traveling from server to the client over the network okay so the traveling over the network time is basically a latency time okay now in jmeter it works slightly in a different way okay so what happens in the jmeter it takes some time to assemble the request okay so let me add some here some more images here okay for example right so in jmeter what happens is that when you create a request jmeter takes some time very milliseconds maybe okay in order to assemble your request so maybe it starts from here okay and then uh, let me change the color so that you can identify this one okay let me change the color to green okay now in a similar fashion on the server side okay it might take some time to assemble the response okay it might take some time to assemble the, the response okay so in jmeter this time is also included in the latency okay so this is concept of latency now if this latency is increased for example if you are getting the higher latency for example 10 seconds for a request a particular request or feature this is a problem okay the latency should be lower the lower the better okay similarly 
same concept is for the connection time so connection time is that in how much time your application got connected to the server it may be some milliseconds or maybe seconds okay and when we talk about the connection time it also include the handshake with the server so there might be ssl handshake so that time is also included in the jmeter higher the connection time and higher the latency this is a problem these both should be the lesser or the better one so the if you get milliseconds for the each request this is better the more latency the more performance will be degraded because your request is taking so much time from client to server and from server to client and this time is added into the complete response time okay this is a problem so let's go back to the jmeter so this latency is basically in the milli milliseconds here okay and this particular request has this latency and in the similar context we have this connect time okay then we have a couple of more options here the first one is basically scroll automatically so what it will do for example if there are so many samples here okay and you need to scroll down in order to see any particular sample number okay so the one method is that you can do it manually the other one is that you need to automatically scroll down to the bottom one okay now let's uh, change the number of users here from 5 to 50 and clear the results and run this one so you will see that it will is not automatically scrolling down here okay so it is on the top if you want to scroll you have to scroll down okay now select this option and run this again you will observe that it will automatically scroll down yeah you can see this it will automatically scroll down to the bottom of your request okay then we have this child sample so if you have any kind of child sample here and you want to see only that sample just check this one but in this case you will get only the child samples not the main sample okay so it would be your requirement how you want to populate the samples here in this particular report okay then we have total number of samples which is 50 which we have defined here in the threads okay then we have last sample 729 milliseconds this is the 50th sample and this is a time okay then we have an average time of these 50 samples and then we have a deviation of 47 milliseconds between these samples okay and again if you want to write these into the file add the file you can write this one and again if you want to read from the file open the file here and you can read you can log errors successes and you can also configure the different header files here okay thank you so much for watching this tutorial we hope that you have learned something today if you like our content then do subscribe our channel like share and comment once again thank you so much and see you in the next lecture